Landowners and conservation professionals are excited about a new type of woody structure that mimics beaver dams. The benefits are similar. They store water, slow down runoff in streams, and enhance fish and wildlife habitat. They're called beaver dam analogs, or BDAs for short. Bruno rancher Chris Black worked together with a number of conservation professionals to install some BDAs on his private land on Hurry Up Creek, a tributary of Deep Creek. I've wanted to get beaver in here for years, but it is an ephemeral stream. We have enough willows to make good food for them and everything, but the problem is we don't have enough water and we don't have the willingness for him to stay. They've put in about 10 structures so far, and more are planned in the future. What it did, they, they came in and they put these in, and I think very successfully, because they're backing water up, they're creating habitat for spotted frogs, for sage grouse, for beaver. In fact, when the group visited the site recently, a few people got down on their hands and knees and tried to find frogs right away. Bingo. Conservation professionals with the Governor's Office of Species Conservation, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Idaho Fish and Game, and the Natural Resources Conservation Service are all interested in exploring the benefits of using BDAs to improve riparian habitat and store water. The emerging technology of using natural on-site woody materials to build BDAs is building popularity in Idaho and the Intermountain West. The concept was developed initially by Utah State University and Anna Branch Solutions, and it's catching on in Idaho. It just benefits a whole host of wildlife species, and that, that's why Fish and Game is really interested in this. It's a low-cost way to get a lot of bang for your conservation buck. The Life on the Range crew visited two very different projects on opposite sides of Idaho to learn why BDAs were installed, how they were built, and what benefits may occur. Experimenting with BDAs on Chris Black's property was a natural fit, officials said, because it adds value to a number of conservation projects that have been completed in the area. Plus, there's a healthy population of sage grouse living nearby. That's why the Sage Grouse Action Team was excited about the opportunity. And so we needed to find out how to um, put these dollars on the ground in, in the best way possible, so leverage on what's already being done. And um, one of the things coming up is, uh, is mesic meadows and how to improve mesic habitats and, um, and working with the different landowners and partners and agencies on how to do that. And we need to find out how to be um, strategic in that, in putting dollars not just in postage stamps across the state, but in strategic locations. I think it will benefit sage grouse as far as expanding that sponge and in, uh, expanding that, that green line, the, the bugs and the associated forbs um, that, that use that uh, green line as habitat will, uh, will bring in the sage grouse to kind of have more of a, a grocery cart there for them when they come to the store. Um, if we provide them with a bigger green line, there's more supplies there for them when they come uh, during late brood rearing season. The Holly Creek project is far more complex in many respects. With about 25 BDAs in place, it's been turned into a perennial stream. But the objectives of the project are similar to improve habitat for fish and wildlife, and work toward providing season-long flows for endangered salmon, steelhead, and resident fish. Hawley Creek is a tributary of the Lemhi River near Ledor at an elevation of 6,000 feet. The project has a major irrigation component for nearby ranchers who have long-time water rights on the stream. Daniel Bertram, with the Governor's Office for Species Conservation in Salmon, spent several years planning the project to make sure it worked for everyone. So there was about two years worth of negotiations, making sure that whatever we did, there was no harm to the areas. Um, we need to make sure that if we keep the agricultural community healthy and, and vibrant through these projects. And, and I personally don't feel that there's any reason we can't have both agriculture in the community and an Adventist fish, right? 
The NRCS designed a new irrigation system that pipes irrigation water to the landowner's property. The Lemhi Soil and Water Conservation District installed the projects to serve McFarland Land and Livestock and Ledore Land Partners. The Lemhi Regional Land Trust secured an easement to make the irrigation projects possible. A portion of the project crossed BLM land, so an environmental assessment was required as well. Holly Creek BDAs um, are a small part of a much larger project that we're doing um, on Holly Creek to restore riparian habitat and improve fisheries habitat. We thought it was a great idea. Ultimately, the new project configuration with enclosed pipeline and pivot irrigation was more efficient, conserving water to restore season-long flows to Holly Creek. Previously, it had been dried up for a hundred years. By holding this water, higher in the drainage, we're actually not only providing habitat for anadromous fish and native fish, but we're, we're providing that irrigation water later in the season when they need it as well. As Bertram worked through all the planning and permitting issues, the final step was to obtain wetlands and stream alteration permits from the Army Corps of Engineers and the Idaho Department of Water Resources. They put in the BDAs with help from the Salmon Youth Employment Program. Eleven more will be installed this year. It's been a really neat project. Uh, the kids really like it. Uh, it it's, uh, oh, it's a lot okay. like building fence, but it's not building fence. And, and, you know, they get to get in the creek and get wet. In both project locations, they used hydraulic post pounders to install the vertical posts for the BDAs. It's unreal how much of a difference that thing makes. We did the couple by hand last year and that took forever. And now, so these posts, um, we get each one in the ground, it probably takes five seconds, 10 seconds. Wow. So, I mean, that's been a huge difference maker and that's really gonna speed things up now that we have that to use in the region. We're really excited. The first one we drove in, we just looked at each other like, are you kidding me? This is gonna be a piece of cake now. And then they used local woody materials, such as willows for the horizontal cross section, to slow down and hold back the water flow. They put in the first five BDAs with local volunteers. We had the school kids from Red come. We had um, volunteers from Trot Unlimited come up and help us. And it was a great learning opportunity for everyone. In the following year, the Salmon Youth Employment Program put in another 15 structures. Everyone's going, well, wait, why are you building beaver dams? You know, so as the kids got to see the, the landscape transform, um, they really got it and they really, you know, they just, they really didn't want to go back to building fence. They wanted to build more beaver dams. The biggest challenge was bringing in willow branches from other locations. Holly Creek had been dried up for years and only had some large juniper trees growing next to it. Well, I'd have to say the harvesting of the willow has been one of the most challenging projects we've had. Um, you know, sometimes we've been bringing willow from, you know, I mean 20, 30, 40 miles away from the project site. After installing the branches and willows against the posts, the structures tend to seal up on their own. Bertram is pleased with the results so far. He is closely tracking results. I couldn't be happier, um, to be honest. It's Holly Creek hasn't dried up in those two years. So it's pretty neat to, awesome. to see where it's come and to see the benefits to the private landowners, but then also to the ecosystem. By restoring season-long flows to Holly Creek, that should provide improved overwintering habitat for fish. As the riparian area converts more to a wet meadow, there may be benefits for sage grouse as well. Slowing this water down, spreading it out, you can, you can just see the, the response from the vegetation, the grass is growing up. I can hear the grasshoppers in the background. And passerines have just exploded. And all of the wildlife species insects have just exploded. And we're already seeing a lot of brood rear and sage grouse coming into this area and utilizing it in the short period that we've been here. Chris Black likes the results as well. These, these meadows are like, are like a sponge. I mean, they, they take that water and they hold it and release it slowly into the system so that, the, so that we don't get that big rush in the spring. The water running off in the spring, when these springs are active, they'll run hard and then just dry up. 
and then you just have a dry meadow. Well, you don't get that. With the water held back into the system, you get it released slowly. And that benefits downstream users too, that water being released slower. So it's, it's a benefit for everything. Black brings his cattle into the Toy Valley area in the fall, when the valley is chock full of tall grass for the cattle to eat. It's going to help my cows because the, the secondary effects are I'm going to have more grass on the hillsides and every, all of that. But holistically, what helps my cows will help all other species too. It's great to partner with a willing landowner to try out a new conservation practice on private land, officials say. The opportunities that we have with private landowners is um, a willingness to kind of lean into risk a little bit more than maybe the federal land management agencies. And so where real benefits are is where they can demonstrate an opportunity uh, with a conservation practice that we may not be able to um, otherwise do on public lands. So Chris is a progressive landowner um, and we appreciate his willingness to support our opportunity to learn um, a new conservation practice out here and recognizing that we are going to have some failures and that as we develop these practices and use this as a demonstration site we'll be able to um, convince the broader public which will then allow us to implement this on public land. Easy access from Mudflat Road, the Owyhee Backcountry Byway, will allow ranchers and conservation professionals to host tours of the BDA project. And you have to demonstrate these types of areas within different landscapes across the state. Bertram has also been hosting tours on the Holly Creek project to share early results. He's doing in-depth monitoring to track vegetation and water trends. We've done a tremendous amount of monitoring. So we've done a lot of aerial monitoring where we've got high resolution videography where we can sh show the, the change in uh, vegetation communities. We've also got on the other side of the creek there, we've got piezometers installed where that's monitoring the groundwater depth so we can see exactly what's happening with the groundwater. Ultimately, Black likes the strength of multiple partners working together to improve wildlife habitat. With all of us coming together and working on these, we can leverage that and create great leaps in conservation with that money and time. This was all mostly time and not so much money on this project, but it all comes together that way. And everyone, everyone's working together and everyone's pulling for the thing. And it becomes a great story for, for how we can manage these lands through the future.